The Ethiopian highlands rise high into the skies over the equator. Many rare animals are found only here, in the cradle of mankind. These rough highlands in the east of Africa are also home to wolves. The animals withdrew here thousands of years ago. This is the story of a young she-wolf and her pack. They are highland wolves and only roam here on the roof of Africa. To a height of 3,000 meters, jungle surrounds the edges of the Ethiopian highlands. During the rainy season, fog pervades the treetops. The air is saturated with steam. Plants, similar to our heather, grow meters high. This is a forest that withholds its secrets. Much of the woodland is untouched. New species are discovered here at the edge of the highlands every year. It was only recently discovered that lions have made this jungle their home. How they live here is still a mystery. The fog dissipates where the open highlands begin. An icy plateau extends at a height of 4,000 meters. The Ethiopian highlands are one of the few places on Earth where frost could be found so close to the equator. Rolled up snugly against the cold, a wolf lies in the grass. Let's call her Megiti. Distant barking from the neighboring valley has woken her. But first, the sub-zero temperatures of the night need to rise somewhat. She has been wandering the plateau by herself for weeks. The barking beckons her. Megiti has lost her pack and is looking for a new one. She needs to be careful. Roaming around another pack's territory can be dangerous. The morning greeting ritual is enjoyed by the entire pack. Just like their European cousins, Ethiopian wolves live in groups of up to 20 animals. They are obviously happy to see one another after such a bitter cold night. On calm days like these, the warming sun is especially enjoyable. Only members of the family clan are allowed to join in the ritual. It strengthens the bond between the pack and affirms its hierarchy. An outsider wolf would not be accepted. Finally, the pack sets off to patrol its territory. The animal 
patrols monitor the border of a 13 square kilometer area, securing the best hunting grounds. The alpha female of the pack stays behind, as do her three-week-old pups. The little ones spent the night alone in the den. Their only food source is still their mother's milk. Until the others are back from the hunt, the mother won't leave their side. The Ethiopian highlands are divided into two sections by the Great Rift Valley. Pressure in the Earth's crust pushes the land two centimeters further apart every year. It is this rift that was once the cradle of mankind and is home to diverse flora and fauna. Their thick fur protects the geladas during the cold highland nights. The rare primates sleep in crevices in the rock face where they are protected from leopards and other predators. Monkey by monkey, the group slowly follows the alpha male to a spot in the sun. Still shivering from the cold of the night, waking up isn't so easy. Now, all of the geladas have come together on the plateau. As usual, it's the smallest that can't keep still for long. Geladas are not scared of water. After all, for several months of the year, it rains every day. the morning's ablutions, it's time for grooming. But fur care is only the secondary function of this ritual. As with the wolves' morning greeting, the body contact strengthens social cohesion. So everyone within touching distance receives a free delousing. It's also a chance for the alpha male to stifle any competition. Usually, just a few threatening gestures are needed. The animal's terrifying dentures are thankfully rarely put to the test. Geladas are the descendants of an entire primate genus that used to exist all over Africa and Asia. Nowadays, they are found only in the mountains of Ethiopia. The diversity of the natural habitats has led to the origination of diverse species. Even today, the elemental forces of the Earth's crust are still shaping the roof of Africa. The wolves are spreading their scent marks. Invisible lines traverse the plain. Territory markers. They are respected by the wolves of a region and refreshed regularly. 
When things are quiet, the pack splits up and each wolf goes its own way for the day. Megiti is wandering along one of the invisible borderlines. She has been wandering close to the area of a new pack for days. The scent traces, picked up by her sensitive nose, relay information about them to her. There is nothing edible left here. But rolling around in the carcass gives the young wolf a sense of well-being, as with all canine species. Megiti is unaware of what is happening on the other side of the hill. The pups of the alpha female are busy playing games. She's not expecting there to be any strange wolves nearby. The hill over the den is a favorite play area for the young ones. Whoever plays here has the best lookout position. But something's not right. They spotted Mikiti and react instantly. Their mother has also caught her scent. Warning cries to her young are unmistakable. Get in the den. The female does not hesitate and runs towards the intruder. Loudly, she calls for the rest of the pack. She keeps her distance to Megiti and continues the warning cries to her pups to stay in the den. All Megiti wants is contact with the wolves. But for the mother, her intrusion is unacceptable. and she forces the young she-wolf back over the unseen territorial line. <coughs> Megeti dares a last attempt. Surviving without the protection of a pack is a daunting task in the highlands. But this time, the mother stays in pursuit until the intruder is dispelled from the territory. The canyons of the highlands are like funnels. When the sun warms the air all day, strong currents form. Perfect conditions for the aerial games of the thick-billed raven. A piece of wood is all that is needed to show off an extravagant flying maneuver for the partner. Thick-billed ravens are the world's largest songbirds. Elegantly, they demonstrate their reign over the airspace of the roof of Africa. The springs in the highlands are the source of countless rivers, the drinking water supply for millions of people living in the Horn of Africa.
Megiti has ended up in this water world at the edge of the wolves' territory. Ethiopian wolves tend to avoid swamplands and do not usually hunt here. But Megiti has no choice. All the other territories in the region are taken. These blue-winged geese have young goslings, which are worth a hunting attempt. But the wolf's hunting prowess leaves much to be desired, and the youngsters dive for safety. Megeti doesn't dare go into the deeper water, so she woefully continues on an empty stomach. Perhaps she'll have better luck on the other side of the swamp. But even the territory beyond the springs is also taken. Ethiopia is one of the most densely populated countries in Africa. Nomadic cattle herders press into the protected lands. Almost 100 million people living on a surface area of some 1 million square kilometers. Despite the rough climate, the meadows are well suited as grazing land. Where there are people, there is always something to scavenge. Surrounded by cattle, the starving wolf closes in on her prey. Ethiopian wolves are nutrition experts. They almost only hunt rodents. The cattle don't even raise their heads. The young wolf stays near the harmless herbivores to get even closer to her prey. Once she has a victim in her sights, she uses her fine hearing to track it. The digging causes panic and forces the small creature to the exit. Where she is waiting with open arms. But the grass rat is little more than a snack and won't satisfy her for long. Not far away, her chances of success are higher. The neighborhood opens up to a wide dip. The deep grooves in the ground are caused by an extraordinary creature. the giant mole rat. A popular choice, as the rodents weigh more than a kilogram. A mole rat spends its entire life burrowing beneath the surface. Barely gone, and already digging away at the back door, with the grace of an excavator, they shovel their way through the earth. What was that? Oh, just the neighbors again. Giant mole rats are sociable creatures, 
Yet no one quite knows what they get up to underground. They can only be found in the Ethiopian highlands. They eat anything green they can get their paws on. When the coast is clear, they even grab a few bites outside of their burrow. The large rodents have a surprising ally. The moorland chat. Where there's a rat, there's usually one of these small birds. The rodents have come to rely on the birds as reliable lookouts. With one on the lookout, one can dig around at will. Which is exactly what the moorland chat wants. The beetle larvae hidden underground would be out of reach without the help of the rodent. Two or three of these protein parcels are enough to fill the stomach for the day. The restless excavations of the mole rat attracts more visitors. These two only exist in the Ethiopian highlands. The wattled ibis. Wherever the giant rodents are doing their groundwork, they arrive in flocks to pick at the larvae and worms in the loosened soil. The giant mole rats only rummage around the surface for about an hour a day. Enough time to not just secure food for themselves, but also for their manifold feathered guests. regularly returns to the pup's den on the hill. It is a fine vantage point for surveying the plain. Megeti doesn't realize that she has been seen. Yet today, something is different. The young wolf is undecided. The other wolves approach. And she waits. Eye to eye, they stand and face one another. But the pack's leader doesn't attack. Megiti decides to make the first move. The ban has been broken. The others welcome the young wolf without restraint. Megiti's patience has paid off. The pack takes her in. Now they will go on patrols together. The rich hunting ground of the pack extends into the vast plain before them. Megeti is keen to take advantage of it. Too keen. 
The giant mole rat is alert. Next door, another has gnawed everything bare and is working its way towards new green areas. This could be easy prey. But the warren has several exits. Hunting mole rats requires a tactical approach. The first attempt must be successful. There are no second chances. Like a cat, the wolf creeps in until she is within a leap of her prey. The rodents sense the slightest vibrations in the ground. The closer she is to her goal, the smaller the huntress makes herself. She does not let the clueless rat out of her sights for a second. If it looks up, that means freeze. Giant mole rats are short-sighted. In the distance, they can only register shadows and movement. The rodent blocks the cave entrance, fiercely defending itself. his persistence pays off. She just needs a couple more catches like this a day to ensure a balanced diet. The giant mole rat plays a key role in the ecosystem of the Ethiopian highlands. The wolves would not survive here without them. Africa just beneath the sky. Only rarely do the clouds manage to envelop the highlands like this. Just underneath, where the sea of clouds meet the land, unique forests of fog emerge. Just a stone's throw from the plateau, yet an entirely different world. Little is known about barley monkeys. They only live in these forests. The monkeys are bamboo experts and rarely come down from the trees. The animals are being keenly observed. what brought the kings of the savannah to the forests. Jungle lions have never been filmed before. Are these vervets really their prey? There is no research data on the hunting behavior or way of life of the lions that live here, a species that one usually knows so much about.
whether it's barley monkeys or jungle lions. Year after year, these forests reveal new secrets. In the north of Ethiopia, giant heather trees cover the high plateau. The light vegetation allows much space for expansive meadows, the grazing ground of the geladas. With their short, powerful fingers, they rip up the turf and pick seeds out of the ground. Geladas are the only primates in the world that exclusively feed on grass. This grass ripping is a trained skill, but practicing it quickly becomes boring. Playing around is much more fun for the young offspring. The thin green blades only offer a meager calorie intake, forcing the geladas to eat for up to 10 hours a day. Shortly before sunset, the geladas retire to the rock face. Whilst the grown-ups enjoy the last warming rays of the sun, the little ones show no interest whatsoever in going to bed. Once the sun finally takes its leave, the geladas descend the rock face and look for a safe place to sleep. Cuddling close to one another is the best way to withstand the cold nights of the highlands. Slowly, the sun regains its strength again and begins to warm the frozen ground. Lonely nights are a thing of the past for Megiti. Now she needs to find her place in the pack. As usual, the young are the first to wake up and fill the time with climbing exercises. But soon, hunger brings them back to their mother. The pups have built up trust to Megiti, and even though she has nothing to offer them, she puts up with their small, sharp teeth anyway.
After the morning ritual, the wolves go down to the plateau. The pups stay behind. They lick the frost off the surface of the petals. As long as they are weaned, they do not need the extra water. But the cool droplets on the plants are intriguing. Today, Megiti stays with the pups. The young female looks after them as a matter of course, and they make sure they get up to all the trouble that young animals love doing. It's not unusual for low-ranking females to look after the young whilst the others go off to hunt. Never before has the pup seen a mole rat, but it already practices like a grown wolf. And even has the most important lesson of the Highland Wolves in his blood. Once you've caught something, never let go. And if need be, fight for it and get it back. Megiti intuitively knows what to do. As if she's done nothing else her whole life, she trains with the young ones. This training also serves the purpose of making Megiti more experienced with the wild pups. At some point, perhaps soon, she will be able to use the experience when raising her own young. The rainy season is closing in. Like beacons of fire, the torch lilies stretch upwards to the sky. Their flowery, often meter-tall heads will soon fill entire valleys. And this will not go unnoticed. For olive baboons, these are the most sought-after delicacies of the season. They inspect every petal and suck out the sweet nectar. Before long, the baboons sport yellow moustaches. Pollen, which is transported to the next plant. No one partaking in the sweet petals can escape the dust of the lilies. Elegantly, the sunbirds carry out their work. They form their tongue to a tube through which they can suck the sugary nectar deep from inside the petals. The baboons have a more rustic approach. It's a miracle that the flexible flower heads don't snap off. Villagers are on the way to the High Valley. These people are some of the earliest settlers in Ethiopia, and their life as cattle herders and farmers is basically the same as it was hundreds of years ago. 
the herd dictates the order of the day for the nomads on the lofty plain. The shepherd's dogs go with the small zebu cattle to the grazing meadows and protect them from leopards. There are many dogs. The search for food increasingly drives them into the wolves' territory. Megeti warns the alpha female. The dog traverses their area almost every day, but this close to the den, he is a threat to the pups. Together, they confront the intruder. It is thanks to Megeti's courage that the dog is chased off. But Megeti goes a step further. Again and again, she rolls around in the dog's feces. A ritual that will have consequences. For the thick-billed raven, cattle herds are always of interest. Whether in flight or on a perch, they keep a close eye on the valley and its plains. The ravens are almost as large as geese and are only found in the Horn of Africa. The birds have discovered the remains of a zebu cattle. But the ravens are dwarfed by the bearded vulture. It can stay airborne for hours without a flap of its wings. For the birds, the canyons and their air currents are an ideal habitat. And where there are cattle, its staple diet can be found, bones. With almost no persuasion, even the last raven gives up its find. The wolf pack is in good spirits. The pups have grown into fine young wolves, but the den is too small for them now. They're getting harder to control and venture further and further out onto the plains. Soon, they will go on the patrols with the rest of the pack. Today, Mugeti doesn't join in any battles of strength with the young wolves. She is restless and hesitant. Something drives her off, away from the pack. She goes hunting to the most distant levels of the lofty plain. The young mole rat is not paying attention and should be easy prey. But Bagheti skids at the final moment and the rodent disappears into its labyrinth. 
this has been happening for days. The wolf could no longer coordinate her behavior. Her muscles contract and twitch permanently, and her usually steady gait gives way to trembling. A new attempt. This time, the mole rat is only a leap away. Too late again. She is no longer master of her own legs. Even walking is a struggle. It is as though an alien force has taken over her body. Despite being surrounded by prey, she is unable to satisfy her hunger. Brigetti is getting weaker by the hour. She is very ill. With the arrival of the humans, a treacherous disease was brought to the highlands. Canine distemper. The virus is what rendered Maggetti an orphan. It annihilated her entire pack. It was a miracle that she even survived. But now, Death rears its ugly head. She was probably infected by rolling in the dog feces. Highland walls are at the mercy of the disease. Once they are infected, the virus easily takes hold of the animal. With the humans, their cattle and dogs, the deadly virus has also found its way into Maggetti's new pack. Maggetti had no predators to fear. No one was hunting her. No one had shot her prey or destroyed her habitat. Yet still, she has not survived. The Ethiopian wolves once retreated to this land above the clouds. Now, reality has arrived here too. Less than 500 wolves are left roaming the high plains of the Horn of Africa. No one knows if they too will be infected by distemper one day. There is no survival guarantee for these wolves. The future of the Ethiopian wolf hangs by a thread. And the wondrous world of the highlands would be a poorer place without them. <laughs>